recorded this play and air session back in late summer last year. Maybe, like me, you are ready for some color after a gray winter. I finally got back to the painting after I figured out how I wanted to finish it and got back to editing the video. Here it is, please enjoy it. As always, feel free to use any images from my videos for your own art. Just tag me if you post it. I'd love to see what you create. Puyallup River Valley near Sumner. I live just up the hill from this little farm and I noticed the other day that they have a new flower shop open and a bunch of beautiful sunflowers blooming so I wanted to stop in and do a painting. I met Allie in the new flower shop just opened this February and she was really friendly and said it would be fine if I set up and did a painting. Beautiful little farm. like this scene here. I love that background. Those big beautiful trees and the little foothill behind it. Different shades of green and some deciduous trees and also evidence of the fire that we had on that hill a couple years ago. And then of course the sunflowers in the foreground. That's really gorgeous. I also like Zooming in a little bit closer to the sunflowers, like catching the end of this row of tall sunflowers. That's really pretty. So I need to make a decision. I'm going to snap a couple pictures on my iPhone and decide what I'm going to paint. I think this scene offers some challenges in that in order to convey how close the flowers are to the viewer, I'd really have to abstract those background trees or maybe not even include them at all, just make them a blue sky. But it would have the, the fun of painting those flowers up close. This scene has the benefit of being more of a complete composition, a full landscape. And it also has those sunflowers that are turned away. There's a beautiful pink shade to the back of the sunflowers that's really coming out here on, in person. I don't know if it's coming out on the video. So I'll take a couple pictures with my iPhone and make a decision what I'm going to paint. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Here's roughly the scene I'm going to paint. I am going to zoom in kind of close on this, on the tail end of this row of taller sunflowers. I like the variety in the sunflowers. There's some yellow ones and some red ones. I like their height and how they're kind of bobbing around in the wind. I'm really going to simplify the background. I may just go with a, a blue sky with a little hint of the, the hill behind. I'm not sure. I may just go with blue sky and just ignore the, the background for now and see how that looks. I'm working on an 11 by 14 inch oil primed linen panel this time. This is a Gorilla Painter. Pretty nice little panel, pretty affordable for oil primed linen. Nice fine texture, nice surface to paint on. For my palette, I've got the rectified turpentine. I'm using Richeson's rectified turpentine this time. This is, I used it once earlier today and it worked out well. It, it has, it seems like it has a little less odor than the distilled turpentine from Windsor Newton. 
but uh, it's hard to judge. It, it still has a strong turpentine odor, and you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to use this indoors. I'm afraid it would make me a little woozy. I've got ivory black, cold gray, titanium white, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, sap green, transparent oxide brown, current sienna, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad yellow. This is Windsor lemon. This is Gamblin radiant lemon and yellow ochre, kind of my typical colors. So I'll start out with a turpentine wash and then I'll take a brush with a little bit of extra turpentine and wipe out the lightest lights. So I'll kind of draw into the underpainting, into the wash to sketch the, the sunflowers. I'm not going to bother with an initial sketch um, with pencil or with a brush. I'm just going to go right into the, the wash and then do the, the sketch by wiping out the lightest lights. And then I'll add a little bit of dark to really establish the value pattern. And then I'll start to mix up the final colors. Starting with this large old broken in bristle brush for the turpentine wash. I'm going to wash in pretty thick colors so that I have something to cut into as I draw the flowers. It's something I've been experimenting with more, trying to develop my style more with the wash um, to go a little thicker initially and then I have less canvas or less linen to cover later in the painting. I can leave more of that underpainting exposed if I spend just a little more time on the on the underpainting, which is challenging and, and fun and can produ produce some neat effects. For the initial wash, I'll wash in a little bit of lizard and crimson and burnt sienna for the sky. That's the colors I'm seeing in the clouds. And then I'll go over the top of that with a nice clean, very high-key blue. I'll wash out those clouds pretty thoroughly because the color is very slight. There's not a lot of chroma to the color and it's very high key. So I'll put in an initial wash of that um, blizzard and crimson and burnt sienna and then wash most of it away so that just a hint of it's left on the linen. I'm going to leave the background out. I'm not going to try to paint that hill or the trees behind the flowers at all. For the flowers, of course the, the flower heads are beautiful cad yellow um, for the yellow flowers with dark brown deep rich brown centers heads and then for the red sunflowers the central color in the petal the center is again a warm brown but not quite as warm as the big yellow ones a little bit cooler and the petals have a ring of alizarin crimson with just a touch of cad red and then an outer ring of what I would call a mix of alizarin crimson and Windsor radiant lemon. It's kind of a, a warm reddish gray. Then the stalks of the red sunflowers are kind of a lime green with lavender notes, especially where they're in shade. And for the yellow sunflowers, the stalks are more of a richer green. And then the leaves are all kind of the same. They're darker toward the top. They're sap green with white and a little bit of radiant lemon ranging down toward the bottom, a lot more white added and more yellow, less green. And then the ground is kind of a, again, kind of that alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. Majority of the tone is in that color harmony. And then there's just some um, leaves, some just a chaotic mix of different scrubby grasses coming through, some green, some brown. So I think what I can do is wash in, for the most part, that alizarin crimson and burnt sienna 
for the sky, believe it or not, and for the ground. Scrub out most of that for the sky. I can use that same mix, maybe add a little bit of yellow for the red sunflowers, and then go with cad yellow for the yellow sunflowers and for the leaves. And then for the stalks of the flowers, I can just use a small brush with a little bit of turpentine and a little bit of yellow and draw them back in. The sun is right, really shining bright on my panel where I'm set up. Um, I may try to turn a little bit so it's not quite such direct light. It's always a hard decision for me whether to get out the umbrella or not. Um, the sun is hot on me where I'm standing and it's really bright on the panel, it's really bright on the scene so I have to wear sunglasses to be comfortable for a few hours. Um, so I have a really mild pair of amber sunglasses. I find those work out pretty well. They're not too dark. They warm up the scene just a little which often goes well with the greens here in the Pacific Northwest and it doesn't throw the end result off too much I don't think. Alright the sun keeps killing the camera so I've strapped my face mask to it to provide it some shade I'm trying not to block the lens. Hopefully this works. Okay, there's the rough wash in. I splattered some paint to add some abstraction. Maybe I can use some of those splatters for the cloud formations and for the flowers. I swept the big brush up and down a bit to help me suggest some stems of the, of the sunflowers. I don't want to end up painting every leaf and every stem. I want there to be some abstraction there that will suggest it for me. So I'm going to borrow some of those pieces of abstraction that I like now and take a brush, a little stiffer, smaller brush. This is a rosemary evergreen with some turpentine and wipe out some of the lighter lights now like the, the clouds in the sky and the stems of the flowers and some of the flower heads just to give me kind of a value pattern, a guide for the composition. Alright, the face mask over the camera seems to be working, it's not dying as often. And there's some clouds rolling in, that'll help. Well that was quite a bit of fun. I took quite a bit of time. I took a lot of time on this turpentine wash to create something that looked interesting to me. A, an abstract pattern of dots and lines and colors that really appealed to me. So now I'll clean my palette, put away the turpentine and get out the gamsol odorless mineral spirits and start to mix up the final colors. I'm just going to take color notes because the light's going to change fast now with clouds rolling in and the sun setting. It won't do me any favors by taking hours out here now capturing the colors so the end result may be a little rougher but I think the colors will be truer if I can move quicker. some colors mixed up here and this should about do me. I've got color notes for about everything there. I've got a grayed out cerulean blue touch of ultramarine blue for the sky and here's the cloud color. I mixed up just a touch of it to go on top of the, the sky if I need it. I've got a dark grayed out green for the shadows in the sunflowers in the distance. So it's more gray than the closer shadow colors. This is basically the same color but with more chroma. So I added more sap green and more ultramarine blue to bring up the chroma. This has more ivory black, a little more um, red to gray it down some. This is one step lighter and a bit cooler, especially in the closer leaves in the shadows there's a nice coolness to the shadows in some places and then warm shadows as it gets closer as well. These are kind of partial 
half tones, not quite full shadow, not quite in the light. Then here's a light for the leaves up high and a light for the leaves down low. There's a kind of gradient, it's nice. The leaves get more yellow and lighter as they get closer to the ground. And then this is the same thing, the light on the leaves in the distance, more gray. Then I've got a stock color here and I can just dip into some of these wrote these sunflower colors as I need to to shift the stock color a bit and then I can add white as well to bring up the value. And then I've got the sunflower colors. This is the center of the red sunflower, really bright, vibrant, where it's getting the sunlight and it's facing me. This is one step higher value, same color for the tips of those leaves and then where it kind of goes into shadow a little bit, it gets a little cooler or where it's turning away it gets a little grayer. I can dip into some of the blues with this as well and suggest some of the shadows I'm seeing. Same thing here, I can dip into some ultramarine blue to tone this down to make it darker and also make it bluer. Then I've got the yellow, a very orange yellow for the petals under the big brown yellow sunflowers. I've got a little bit of this same color but with more yellow, more of the lighter value yellow added to bring up the value but keep the intensity. And then more white here for where the sunflowers are turned away, the back of the leaves are more white. And this is a kind of in between between this and this. It's a yellow, high value yellow, yellow with a little bit of pink. In some places I may dip straight into the pure color to bring up the chroma, especially on these closest sunflowers. Normally I start with the sky and then work forward, but here I wanted the sunflowers to be really clean. I didn't want to contaminate the sunflower color with the sky color. And I was okay with contaminating the sky color a little bit with the sunflower color. It actually helped to warm up the sky a bit as it nears the horizon. So that's why I did it in that order. Hi, welcome back to my studio. Well, it's been a few months since I did this plein air painting down at Newton's Farm in Sumner, near where I live. You can see where it ended up. I like the color harmony. I like the subtle pearly blue of the sky with little bits of burnt sienna warm color peeking through. I like the arrangement of the sunflowers at kind of a slight angle and a random pattern. But what I really struggled with, well the light was changing so fast and my camera kept dying because of the sun directly on it that I, I lost the time, lost the light, and wasn't really able to finish this lower part. Well it has an interesting abstract kind of nature to it. It's a, it doesn't read right now. I want to finish up the painting of the sunflowers and I want to impose some kind of pattern, some kind of order to the chaos down here. So I did a bunch of pencil sketches and gouache paintings and even an oil painting to try to get an idea where I wanted to take this painting.
and I don't want to zoom in on this painting. I want to preserve the composition I have here, but I want to impose a little more order. So what I'm going to do is carve into this bank of green a little bit with more of that sky color. I may introduce just a little more of the clouds here on this side, especially where it meets the beautiful larger, closer sunflowers. And I may want to increase the sizes of those larger, closer sunflowers just a little bit. I think I want to add maybe one more sunflower down lower, a red one or a yellow one, I'm not sure yet. And then I want to introduce a lighter value of the ground plane, the scrubby weeds, undergrowth down at the ground plane down here also at an angle. So I'm going to introduce kind of an angle this way toward the top and an angle this way toward the bottom so that they're not parallel. And then I also want to exaggerate or bring out just a little bit the the lines, the drawing of the stems of the sunflowers. I think that'll be I think that'll read well and be very pretty. And I have it suggested in here. I just want to bring it out a little bit more. So I'll match my colors to what I captured there on site. I love the color harmony that I, I captured that day. I do have a reference photo and I'll refer to that for the drawing, for the shapes, picking out more detail in the, the main flowers. And go from there. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe.